gives two or three seconds for the Canadian defence to get organised and then to line, line people up. And great, wow, well, great skills, good tackle and a and good offload there to Drew Mitchell. But, you know, when, when they start putting a little bit of dynamism into it, then they begin to look a little bit dangerous. But as soon as they slow down and they try and s settle things down a little bit, they begin to look very, very ordinary. First replacement, Aaron Carpenter comes off for Pat Riordan. Uh, Deirdre Lyons, yeah, this is not good because it, I don't know, I can't really tell from this distance, but he's had this sequence of injuries, a calf injury with that horrible DVT threat and then uh, a back injury as well last year. He's only played three of the previous 20 games before the World Cup and I might be ominous this for David Lyons and uh, not the sort of player that John Connolly will want to be losing before a quarter final because he must, you know, be one of his frontline troops really. Well, absolutely. A very important player for, for Australia. And so Stephen Hoyles has come on. very much a sort of a replacement player he'll be wearing 20 as Australia pound away again and getting short change it is as you say David it is so ponderous and slow isn't it they're not cleaning it out well Ashley Cooper I mean, I mean big, the outside backs are becoming targets aren't they for the, for the Canadians well they are they're, it's very predictable it's far too static for them. McMenamin this time, accordingly. Then it uh, via George Smith. It's it's just lacks the dynamism of the New Zealanders, and I know the conditions were different, and one can't underemphasize that. But it is not impressive. It is not going to create great nerves in the England camp in this performance. Well, I don't think so. But again, you have to appreciate, you know, a lot of their frontline yeah. players are, uh, are watching from the stands rather than playing. But, yeah. uh, you know, if anything, it'll give them a little bit of a spur to say, gosh, we really need to lay, raise the level for the next one. <laughs> but when you see uh, in there, Greg Holmes, I think, is just, you know, he's nowhere near the the ball when he's trying to drive out and clear it in. And they've got to target the ball in those contact areas, drive over it and clear out the Canadians. Are we all right, lads? Give us something exciting, Tulson. Well, I can tell you that David Lyons has got a left ankle injury down here on the touchline on the outside of it. When he came off, Nigel, he had about a four-inch hole in his uh, sock in that area. So he'd obviously been trodden on or something of that yeah. description. So when he yeah. came off, it's straight into the ice bucket. I'm looking at him right now and it doesn't look good, but... OK. At least they've got a clear week in terms of recovery time this time. But that's still, if it's a, if it's a twisted ankle, that's not long. So there's Chris Latham. He's all right. And the other who I mentioned earlier had big knee surgery. Amazing what I can do with microsurgery these days. Play again in a week. So they say. Is there anything else exciting you can tell us? You are struggling up there, aren't you, Nigel? <laughs> Well, I think the crowd are a bit. They're yeah. enjoying the band more than the rugby at the Yeah, moment. absolutely. It seems to be that way, that the, the crowd are more into themselves at the present time than the rugby out on the pitch. I can tell you down here the uh, the rain is a, a little bit softer and the wind is coming in from the uh, the bottom left of the screen as our viewers are looking at it. But here come Canada. Yeah, that's better. And the crowd, this will... I mean, if Canada score now, you've got game on and Canada are fancying their chances here. Justin Coker held that time. But they still look... The more committed, and for the reasons we've mentioned before, Australia, in some instances, sort of just going through half cock, but chipped through by Adam Munro. Good follow up as well, but it's turned over. Cameron Shepherd, Waller. again accordingly
Bailey. Well, Sharp did well there. Was it Sharp? I think it might have been McMenamin. But they're going nowhere at the moment. Bit of room on the outside though. Chris Latham goes round the hooker. It's not over yet, but it could be. Oh, it just bounces in Canada's favour. Into touch, could have gone the other way. Well, he didn't have much to, much room to work with. A lovely little chip kick there. Player. Just the right side of the touch flag as well. In sight of his 40th try for Australia. But interesting, when Andrew Monroe, when he put that little chip kick through to Canada and they followed up, put a lot of pressure on Australia. I'm surprised Australia haven't tried one or two because the, the Canadian rush defence is causing a real Oh, problem. it's a gift. It's a gift. A mess up at the line out by Canada in defence. And George Smith finally breaks the mould and it could not have been easier look at this no marking they're not looking well it's just overthrown wasn't it and that's a real shame for canada look at looking at oh, his jumper Earth, could he do that aaron carpenter just come on throws it over the back or too high or whatever oh dear and that's well, one that Australia will accept very happily because they've, they've found it difficult. That was George Smith's ninth try and something that eases the pressure a little bit, but not by a lot. That was the most dreadful throw in, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, absolutely criminal to uh, overthrow on a short line out of that sort of position. Absolutely well, I wasn't. I, 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 forgive me, because I was sort of thinking it was an Australian throw-in, you see, and I couldn't believe it was going to look back and, as you said, it was an overthrow and not just poor marking, because I said initially, 18-3 then, it stays. minutes, 12 minutes into the second half. Latham. And the Canadian fly half follows up well, his little chip ahead. Hands off, hands off. Number 16. To the box where stands Stephen for Canada, Morgan Williams. Full back from the Merva. Good follow up by the fullback. And then an offload. And here's a half chance, not the pace to go. Needed a real speedster through the middle. Yeah, hands on the floor. Well, best little flurry by Canada that. And just these little little chip kicks, little variations to the to the attack there for Canada. Well recovered by the big number eight. And there you see the hand. Pushing things back. Here's David Lyons with his <coughs> ice pack. I think Tulsa's in that box. No? I heard that. Lottie <laughs> <laughs> Takiri, who was 28 just a couple of days ago. Started out, of course, as a rugby league man with the Brisbane Broncos where they breed uh, tough midfielders Farrell of course another for in the England camp they've obviously got someone with a sense of humour the music just playing there was raindrops keep falling on my head <laughs> crowd this is applause it's a French style it's a support of the kicker not meant to put him off it works too and Pritchard gets his second and Canada number one, number just one. keep niggling and stop okay. Australia from stretching away 18-6 well, just looking at the stats there uh, 
since half time Australia have only made three more tackles whereas Canada have made 31 and you, you just wonder how much that's going to tell it's, it's as we go into the final quarter of this match the fatigue that's going to be involved well the Canadian Mounted Police touring rugby team is here in the stand today Tulsa you didn't mention that I've just seen them I do apologise for that Nigel I didn't uh, didn't yeah. have my eagle eyes on that I can tell you that uh, Rod Snow has just come off the pitch though so that will be his last game uh, in the didn't. Canadian shirt didn't get a nice close-up I'd like to have, uh, pay tribute to him and it's going to be an end two is it for Morgan Williams I think I hear a call for him to be replaced his final play in international rugby alongside Rod Snow or maybe it was just something nothing to do with that or I thought he was calling for a replacement now it's actually sure Michael Stephen has been replaced as well Nigel okay yeah, I think they need uh, Morgan Williams to stay on, really. But I can understand that Rod Snow might be wilting, or melting is the word, perhaps. Eighteen <laughs> six. Accordingly, Huxley hasn't really run this show very well but Takiri might now set something special nice dummy wants to go himself bit selfish in the end oh he should have given it dear oh dear crowd the previous to feel that as well my goodness it's three to one or three to none almost and the crowd jeering and uh, then applauding as Canada recover for the moment the whistle's gone well, that was criminal. I mean, uh, you know, Drew Mitchell outside him was screaming for the ball. He did all the hard work. Deeper couldn't hold him. And then a little bit of a dummy. And that just allowed the, the, the Canadian defence to come in. If he'd given the pass after he'd beaten that first man, Drew Mitchell couldn't would have been fail. in for sure. Couldn't fail. As a result, Canada have to put into the scrub. Sorry, sorry. You right? You with us? Yeah, I'm yeah. I have to say, I feel that Takiri's a better winger than a centre yes. in, in the Union game. You know, he's such a big, strong man, very right, difficult very to pull much. down. And when you, when you can bring him in off the wing, and he does look for work as a winger, he's much more dangerous. Lost forward, no advantage. No penalties, gentlemen. Well, some big games this weekend. There are a big one. I've got a bit of interest in in uh, San right? Dien later. Really? Yeah. Well, Italy. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> oh, and Scotland, of course. <laughs> Go, For those of you who realise it, David Soul is the man sitting alongside me. He has this mild interest in uh, Italy versus Scotland tonight. Oh, he was offside there. What was the score last time Italy played Scotland, David? I can't remember, thankfully, but it was about 18-0 <laughs> after six minutes. Yeah, it was, yes, it, it, it's, it's a long time ago now, though, <laughs> and it's a different ball game. 37-17 seems to ring a bell, yeah. but that's not in the world. Wasn't in the World Cup and. Experimental. It's Scotland experimental. That well, day, they? to be fair, I think it's a very different side that's playing uh, later on this evening in Saint Etienne than, other, than played in the RBS Six Nations earlier this year. Being serious, in fact, I mean Scotland. I think of, of the home nations have probably performed most consistently, creditably. Yeah, they've done uh, everything that's been asked of them, and um, you know tonight if they can do that again, then they're, they're into the quarterfinals and potentially a quarterfinal against Argentina, which I think they'd fancy. Meanwhile, Australia hammering away, and this is more like it. Lovely play. And, uh, well, I think Ashley Cooper is one player who's come out with some, some real credit in the backs, and he's that was not the first of his terrific runs on your own. Number 12, penalised the opposite number 12, that's Derek Daypuck. Crowd booing every decision going against Canada as happens. Yeah, here we are. 
he's uh, got the ball stuck underneath him and um, you know just delays a little bit but mm. you know, clearly gets picked up for holding on you mentioned the the Mounties rugby team I bumped into them earlier on today in a, in a cafe you've got delightful ma team manager by the name of Helmut Vasher who was telling me everything was, they've got a, they're playing about four different games